नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड शुभ नवरात्रि सो बिफोर वी मूव फॉरवर्ड ऑन द डिस्कशन आई वुड लाइक टू डू द स्तुति दस महाविद्या स्तोत्र द स्तोत्र इज फ्रॉम a tantric text so i'll take uh, uh, at least 5 minutes to complete this stotra but this becomes our prayer and meditation to all the dasha mahavidyas o namaschandikaye नमस्ते चंडिके चंडी चंड मुंड विनाशिनी नमस्ते कालिके काल महाभय विनाशिनी शिवे रक्ष जगद्धात्री प्रसीद हर वल्लभे प्रणमा जगद्धात्रि जगत्पालन कारिणी जगत्क्षोभक विद्या जगत सृष्टि विधायनी करा विकटा घोरा मुंडमाला विभूषिता हरार्चिता हराराध्या नमा हर वल्लभा गौरी गुरप्रिया गौर वर्णालंकार भूषिता हरिप्रिया महामाया नमा ब्रह्म पूजिता सिद्धा सिद्धेश्वरी सिद्धि विद्याधर गणरयुता मंत्र सिद्धि प्रदा योनी सिद्धिदा लिंग शोभिता प्रणमा महामाया दुर्गा दुर्गतिनाशिनी उग्रा उग्रमयी मुग्रतारा मुग्रगणरयुता नीला नीलघन श्याम नमा नील सुंदरी श्यामांगी श्याम घटिता श्याम वर्ण विभूषिता प्रणमा जगद्धात्रि गौरी सर्वाथ साधिनी विश्वरी महाघोरा विकटा घोरनादिनी आद्यादुराद्याम आद्यनाथ प्रपूजिता श्री दुर्गा धनदा मन्नपूर्णा पद्मा सुरेशरी प्रणमा जगद्धात्रि चंद्रशेखर वल्लभा त्रिपुरा सुंदरी बाला अबला गणभूषिता शिवदूति शिवाराध्या शिवध्येयां सनातनी सुंदरी तारिणी सर्वशिवागण विभूषिता नारायणी विष्णुपूज्या ब्रह्म विष्णु हर प्रिया सर्वसिद्धि प्रदा निनेम गुणवर्जिता सगुण निर्गुण ध्येया अर्चिता सर्वसिदा विद्या सिद्धि प्रदा विद्या महाविद्या महेशरी महेश भक्ता महेशी महाकाल प्रपूजिता प्रणमा जगद्धात्रि शुंभासुर विमर्दिनी रक्त प्रिया रक्तवर्ण रक्तबीज विमर्दिनी भैरवी भुवना देवी लोलजिहा सुरेशरी चतुर्भुज दशभुज अष्टादशुज शुभा त्रिपुरेशी विश्वनाथ प्रिया विश्वरी शिवा अट्टहासा अट्टहास प्रिया धूम्र विनाशिनी कमला छिन्न भाला मातंगी सुरसुंदरी षोडशी विजया भीमा धूमा च बगला मुखी सर्वसिद्धि प्रदा सर्व विद्या मंत्र विशोधिनी 
प्रणमा जगत्ता सारांच मंत्र सिद्धेवरारोहे स्त्रोत्र सिद्धिक पढ़िवा मोक्षमाप्नोति सत्यम वै गिरीनंदिनी ओ नमश्चंडिकाय वंस अगेन धन्यवाद टू द टीम हेलो मई योग for organizing this on a very appropriate time during the navaratri dasha mahavidya a wonderful topic a wonderful concept and very rarely there is information or there is knowledge about the deeper significance of these ten wisdom goddesses dasha mahavidya or ten great cosmic powers what exactly is the spiritual significance of each of the dasha mahavidyas we will be discussing today in our talk the different dimensions of each of the mahavidya do dasha mahavidyas they belong to the tantric tradition the whole idea of dasha mahavidya is not confined to tantric tradition alone it starts right from the veda moves through vedanta comes to the tantric puranic tradition and enters into various other traditions so there is a link or we can say there is an uninterrupted link between the veda vedanta and tradition Uh, the tantric tradition when we contemplate on the deeper dimensions of dasha mahavidyas let's contemplate step by step on various aspects related to dasha mahavidya mahavidya dasha mahavidya 10 great cosmic powers we have heard about vidya here it is mahavidya and again dasha mahavidya why dasha why 10 on one side we see dasha mahavidya and on another side we see navadurga the nine different forms of the divine mother here it is 10 different forms of the divine mother her forms are many her forms are infinite ananta gunavati yet ananta gunavati is she is of infinite forms yet or infinite attributes ananta roopavati ananta gunavati yet she is a roopa without form she is a nirguna without gunas without attributes without qualities that's the beauty of our tradition that's the beauty of the realizations of the rishis that they could ubhayus that that you know like in the gita we have one who has seen both the extreme ends the highest forms and the most spiritual the subtle most 
and the gross most. One who knows, one who has realized both the ends, extreme ends, who has seen her role, the role of the Divine Mother, in her gross most form and in her subtle most form, starting from the most, the super conscience to the uh, inconscience, that Rishi is the real Siddha, the real Rishi who has seen, real Tattva Darshi, who has seen the Tattva, who knows the underlying principles of both the extreme ends. And she, the Divine Mother, can manifest in infinite forms. There are forms and forms and forms, thousands and thousands of forms. But amongst all these different forms, different aspects of the Divine Mother, there are some prominent ones. For example, like when we come to Sri Aurobindo, who was the Shakti Upasaka, who is a synthesizer of the Veda, Vedanta and the Tantra. For him, the four forms of the Divine Mother were extremely important or central to his philosophy, his system of yoga. Maheshwari, Mahakali, Mahalakshmi, Mahasaraswati. There are six forms, there are nine forms, there are twelve forms, there are twenty-four forms. But among all these different forms, all these different aspects of the divine. And where is that place where she is not there? The all-pervading divine mother. Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Chitanit Namastasyai 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 Namoma. She is the very consciousness, the Chetana, Sarva Bhuteshu, in everything, every being, all that has manifested in this universe. And all that is yet to manifest in everything and every being and in every happening, she is present. Yadevi Sarva Bhute Shuchetanitya Vidhiyate. When during the Navaratra, we recite the Devi Mahatmyam, we do the Kavacha, we do the Argala. We do the Kilakam. Now look at the most beautiful Kavacha. Where in every part of our body, the Divine Mother is linked to various parts of our body in a particular form. And we invoke the presence of that form of the Divine Mother when we recite the Kavacha, it almost becomes a meditation for us, creating a deeper awareness in our body. Where we invoke the presence of a particular form of the mother and then pray for the protection of that part. So our entire well-being is maintained by invoking the presence of the Divine Mother. So she is seen in various forms. Various forms. That is why she is Ananta Rupavati, Ananta Gunavati. There is nothing in this space where, or nothing in this universe where she is not present. The longest story in the universe the story of creation, an unend story. And she is the Srishti Kartri, the creatrix. And she is the 
you know, she brings the destruction to the whole creation in order to bring a new creation. This is a perpetual Leela which goes on. And it is she who initiates, she who plays, she becomes one with the play. That supreme divine mother, that supreme divine Shakti, that Ekam Sat of the Veda, that Para Shiva, that Para, para Shakti, which is at the center of the tradition, the yogic tradition, the tantric tradition. She takes different roles, different forms in order to maintain, sustain the creation or various dimensions of the creation. She has some minor roles and she has some prominent roles. In order to understand the deeper dimensions of the Mahavidya, one also has to contemplate on the fundamental principles of the creation. In creation, when we talk about creation, the foundational principles, the time, the space, the sound, the uh, light, the darkness, the speech, the word, the sense, the flow, knowledge, ignorance, all these are the important words. Fundamental to the whole process of creation, how the creation begins, how the creation is sustained. And Dasha Mahavidya, in a sense, tells us this story of creation. These powerful manifestations of the Supreme Consciousness, they are not Therefore, as we understand from various texts, as we understand from the Veda, from the Vedanta, from the Tantra, as we contemplate on the different aspects of each of these Dasa Mahavidyas, what emerges, what realization comes, is that they are not mere deities, but they are gateways to cosmic realization and self-discovery, self-realization. That is why each of the Dasha Mahavidyas is a Brahma Vidya. Look at the Brahma Vidya of the Vedanta and Mahavidya of the Tantra. Moving ahead, I will also discuss about this correspondence between the Mahavidyas and the various other vidyas which are described in the Vedantic tradition. So then we can see the link between the realizations of the Vedic Vedantic and the Tantric traditions or Tantric realizations. So the Dasha Mahavidya, again, when we say the creation, creation is not something which has fallen from the sky all of a sudden. It's not an accidental happening. But from a deeper spiritual point of view, what the rishis, what the siddhas, what the tattodarshis have realized that the creation is a graded self-revelation and it's a continuous process unending, continuous, uninterrupted process. It is a constant unfoldment of the Supreme Shakti, the Supreme Divine Mother, that Ekam Sat. And when we refer to that Supreme there, she, that, that Brahman, that Parabrahma is both Napuman, Nastri, neither Uman Nastri, neither female nor male. That has everything included. Because it represents the unity of consciousness. Division has no role to play there. Division 
duality dwandvas have no role to play in that highest state and it is from that state through various mechanism that supreme reality it enters into its own creation it extends itself it manifests in various forms and creates a little home for himself to be present in everything that it creates so it is a graded self revelation of the divine mother that's how the tantric siddhas have seen the divine mother and they have seen that these 10 different forms of the divine mother they represent 10 different cosmic functions and each one is tied to a specific truth of her being and leads to a unique realization of that one reality that one that ekam sat and together all the mahavidyas they form the diverse facets of the supreme consciousness that have made the creation of our world possible so let's look at the various forms just very briefly i will explain you the names and their roles then we will go to further details we have first amongst all the mahavidyas is the kali mahavidya kali is the embodiment of time she represents the time spirit kala eva stri lingakya kali iti uchyate it is the kala in its feminine form becomes kali and she represents the inexorable might that mahakali that kshatra shakti that governs all existence that pure dynamism which governs all the existence and she because of her inexorable might she is the goddess of yogic transformation mahakali is the goddess of transformation transformation of every aspect of consciousness she uplifts the ordinary consciousness into the higher consciousness by transforming every aspect of that consciousness and therefore in order to transform she destroys to create the new form transform or or you know make it transcend the next mahavidya is tara tara the word tara comes from the root sound in sanskrit tru tru means to cross to traverse therefore a star is called tara tarini tarana all these words come from the same root sound meaning to protect tara is the goddess of protection she is the savior she saves everything she represents the sound force symbolizing the power of spoken word in the creation and she is seen by the siddhas as the saving word tara and she helps in traversing everything transcending everything like kali transforms 
with the force, with the help of Tara, one transcends everything. One goes beyond and enters into that subtle most world. Next, we have Tripura Sundari. She is the beauty of the three worlds. She is the source of beauty and bliss. And she represents the primordial luminous desire. Tripura Sundari. Next, we have Bhuvaneshwari. Bhuvaneshwari is the vast vision of space. She is the ruler. She is the queen of the universe, of the Bhuvana, Ishwari of the Bhuvana. Expanding, she expands our understanding of the cosmos. She is the ruler of the universe by her power. She governs over every aspect of the universe as a ruling power. Then we have Bhairavi or Tripura Bhairavi. Tripura Bhairavi is seen as charm. She directs the supreme word towards manifestation. She is the warrior goddess. With her thundering clap, everything becomes shaken. Everything falls into its own place. Then we have Chinnamasta, the most terrific form of the Divine Mother. The most striking force. And she represents both light and sound. Very, very essential for the creation. Very crucial for the creation. And she, if you have seen the Chinnamasta images, she severs her head and then holds it in her right hand and then drinks the same blood. Therefore, she, from a deeper spiritual realization point of view, she is the consciousness beyond mind. It is the mind which creates obstacles. The mind which interrupts because mind is limited. So for the higher realization, one has to transcend the mind. One has to go beyond the mind. One has to cut it off. Then one enters into the Supreme Consciousness and relishes the Amrita, the flow of Amrita, the Amrita Dhara oozing from one's own depth of consciousness. That's why she is drinking her own blood. Then we have Dhumavati. This is the silent inertness. The smoky Grandmother, she's described like a you know a widow, white cloth, grandmother, representing that silent inertness. If we contemplate on the beginning of the creation, Tama Asit Tamasagulham. Darkness blinded by darkness. Therefore, Dhumavati represents, she signifies the non-being, the Asat. And she is seen as the eldest among all the goddesses. Contemplating on her, one goes beyond everything, goes right into the beginning of the creation. What was their prior creation. Then we have Bagalamki. Bagalamki is seen as the paralyzing power. She arrests everything. 
she halts the free flow of things and energies. She is seen as the hypnotic power of the goddess of the Divine Mother. The child of Matanga. Mata comes from the root sound Man. Mata. Matanga. Ga means movement, going, entering. Mata means mind. Mata means thought. Matangi is that power, that goddess who has entered into the thought or the mind. The goddess power that has entered into the thought mind in order to refine it, illumine it, enlighten it. The expressive way Representing the expressed word and its creative power. That's what is Matangi. Kamalatmika. The epitome of concord and harmony. Kamala. She is the Lakshmi, the Vaishya Shakti. Like the Mahakali is the Kshatra Shakti. Kamalatmika is the epitome of that harmony, symmetry, proportion, symbolizing the delightful beauty. She is the goddess of delight. She rules over the outer beauty. Now, Tripura Sundari is also beauty. She is also delight. The difference between Tripura Sundari and the Kamalatmika is that Tripura Sundari rules over and Kamalat Kamalatmika rules over the outer beauty. She organizes the outer aspect of everything. And each of these Mahavidyas, as I mentioned earlier, is considered, is regarded, is seen, is treated, is adored, is worshipped, as a Brahma Vidya. Each one of these Mahavidyas is a path to divine knowledge, is a path to self realization, is a path to God realization, is a path to world realization. And these deities are of the highest order. When we say, that the Devi has thousands and thousands and thousands of forms in finite forms. Among all these forms in the highest order, the Dasa Mahavidyas, they represent, they offer unique perspectives on the nature of reality and creation. That is why they are uh, they are placed at the highest level. And what is the profound purpose of practicing the sadhana, the discipline related to these Mahavidyas, is to establish the life divine on earth. To realize the divinity within, the divinity without. And by understanding and connecting with these cosmic functions, individuals can, you know, unravel their potential for self-discovery and align with the higher consciousness that underlies the universe. This is what is the purpose of all the Mahavidyas. There are many, many texts which deal with the Mahavidyas in the Tantric tradition. There are separate, there are separate Tantric texts dedicated to each of these Mahavidyas. 
वे हैव काली तंत्र वे हैव तारा तंत्र वे हैव भुवनेश्वरी तंत्र वे हैव बगलामुखी तंत्र सो इन दोस टेक्स देयर फॉर्म्स हाउ टू मेडिटेट अपॉन देम हाउ टू इनवोक देम व्हाट मंत्र व्हाट यंत्र व्हाट रिचुअल्स सो ऑल दिस डिफरेंट डिस्क्रिप्शंस दैट वी फाइंड इन डिफरेंट तांत्रिक टेक्स्ट्स बट अमंगस्ट ऑल द टेक्स्ट्स दैट इज देयर इन द ट्रेडिशन amongst all the texts there is one text known as mahavidya sutras mahavidya sutras composed by vasistha kavyakantha ganapati muni who himself was a upasaka shri vidya upasaka who practiced also chinnamasta and who experienced that kapala bheda as a result of his uh, upasana of chinnamasta it is said that in in 1922 uh, that year when he was rigorously practicing the chinnamasta doing the upasana of chinnamasta so it happened that he had a opening on his skull and then the there was smoke or flame or you know fire emerging through his mind and then immediately uh, uh, all those who were around they called ramana maharshi bhagwan ramana maharshi so he came and then he put his hand on his head so that's how he saved him usually in kapala bheda no one remains after that so after that ganapati muni lived for next 14 years till 1936 when he left his and his major text kaluma sahasram which he had composed uh, as an offering as a guru dakshina to to ramana maharshi for his guru so it contains the deeper dimensions of all the uh, sadhana uh, all the deeper sadhana of the tantric uh, system of yoga of every upasana of devi uma sahasra thousand verses they are representing every aspect of the devi and then there the devi upasana is very finely elaborated and amongst all his works there is one work in sanskrit called mahavidya sutras in the mahavidya sutra ganapati muni has given a very new uh, interpretation of this mahavidyas he being a synthesizer what he synthesizer not the musical instrument but one who brings a synthesis amongst all the knowledge tradition so he synthesized the veda the vedanta and the tantra in the mahavidya sutra he shows what is the veda mantra from rigveda which is meant for say kali through which kali is worshiped veda mantra through which tara is worshiped bhuvaneshwari is worshiped kamalatmika is worshiped matangi is worshiped bagalamukhi is worshiped then he also links all these mahavidyas into the upanishadic vidyas now here let me explain you a little bit about what is vidya and mahavidya now vidya is wisdom the knowledge we know it is the same root sound from which the word veda comes vidya comes and we are the maha to vidya to become the greater wisdom power now these vidyas there are around 32 vidyas described in the vedantic tradition in the upanishads in the brahma sutra so there are this description of the vidyas there is samvarga vidya there is akshi purusha vidya there is upakoshala vidya there is vaishvanara vidya there is are these 
vidyas the vidya are manuals of sadhana by which by following a certain path one realizes a certain aspect of the truth certain aspect of the brahma vidya certain aspect of the supreme reality and each of the vidyas in in the upanishads is described they have a deeper connection with these mahavidyas so uh, i will just explain a few if time continue to do all the uh, mahavidyas and the upanishadic mahavidya at least 10 upanishadic vidyas and their correspondence with the mahavidyas of the tantra so uh, it it begins just imagine before the tantra arrived these ideas like what is represented by kali what is represented by tara what is represented by bagalamukhi these are already there in the seed form in the veda in the vedantic text in the upanishadic texts and in the tantric tradition the mahavidyas occupy a very important place which recognizes i repeat i, I have mentioned about it in the beginning which recognizes the one supreme deity the supreme divine mother presiding over everything as the highest this highest deity like we have para brahm purushottam para prakriti the para the, the supreme divine mother so this highest deity in the context of mahavidyas again is recognized is worshiped is meditated upon as the great primordial goddess and according to the tantric experience tantric realizations this uh, primordial goddess again the 10 outstanding forms of personalities which she takes they represent 10 great paths to knowledge the mahavidyas are gateways gateways i had used the word before gateways to the knowledge knowledge of what knowledge of all that one needs to know in order to understand the creation in order to understand oneself in order to understand the whole world in order to understand the ruling governing powers of the world and we know these different names you know kali tara tripura sundari bhairavi and the this is the mahavidyas in the cosmos they constitute a complete system of knowledge a complete system of knowledge each one governing a particular fundamental function and each one presiding over a particular creative principle of existence and when we contemplate on the mahavidya sutras of ganapati muni we will find that dhumavati presides over the non being asat dhumavati is presiding over non being the being has not yet manifest asat on manifest state of the supreme on manifest state of the creation where she rules over and when the creation begins kali is the time bhuvaneshwari is the space the supreme word turning towards manifestation is bhairavi so bhairavi represents the paravak manifesting in the form of speech but in her original form she is all silent all silent but from that silence wells up the entire speech tara is the perceiving word pasyanti matangi 
represents both Madhyama and Vaikhari, Matangi. The expressed word and the word where it gets connected with the mind, with the buddhi, Madhyama. It is that level, that's why Matangi. Both Vaikhari and Madhyama are represented by Matangi, which is necessary for the creation, for the sustenance of the creation. So, Parapashyanti Madhyama Vaikhari. The primordial luminous desire is Sundari. Without Kama, no creation is possible. Without the delight, without the beauty, no creation is possible. No sustenance in the creation is possible. These are all fundamental to our creation, fundamental to the consciousness. So Sundari is that desire, luminous desire. And the delightful beauty is Kamala. Chinnamastha combines light and sound. Bhagalamukhi arrests the free flow of things. And Vashishta Ganapati Muni, who was an adept of the tantric system of yoga. So in his Mahavidya Sutram, he has ex exclusively dealt with all these ten wisdom goddesses of the Tantra by linking them with the Veda, Vedic and Vedantic realizations. He also presents a correlation between the Mahavidyas from the outer ritual to the highest spiritual knowledge. He has detailed out the meditation forms of these great personalities their location in the microcosm, in the macrocosm, macro and micro, in the sukshma and sthola, the mantras to invoke them, the methods to follow for worshipping them, relationship to each other, and many other deeper dimensions related to these Mahavidyas. And the most important contribution of Muni through this Mahavidya Sutras, as I mentioned, is finding out the corresponding Vedic riks that can be employed as mantras to invoke these goddesses. And again, finding the correspondence that has established between certain Vidyas of the Upanishads and the Mahavidyas of Tantra. For example, Kali of the Tantra, which represents the time spirit, is the Samvarga Vidya of the Upanishad. And what is Samvarga Vidya? I'll explain and I'll show you the correspondence. Tara stands for Akshara Vidya. Tripura Sundari symbolizes Vaishwanara Vidya. Bhuvaneshwari corresponds to Parovariyasi Vidya. Tripura Bhairavi signifies the Jyotir Vidya. Akshi Purusha Vidya is related to Chinnamasta. Chinnamasta is also known as Prachanda Chandika. And Ganapati Muni has a separate stuti as Prachanda Chandika Stotram. Dhumavati characterizes the Bhuma Vidya. Kamalatmika it's a sign of Madhu Vidya. These are the different Vidyas and what are those and then how they are related. I'll just give a little explanation of that. It may not be possible for me to cover everything because we, we will need, uh, say, at least another one hour or uh, one and a half hours to uh, get into the details. But just to give an introduction and to give a understanding this understanding that how they are corresponding with each other. Now let's understand the Samvarga Vidya, which is described in Chandukya Upanishad. In the Chandukya Upanishad, there is a beautiful story, short story, where uh, there is this King Janashruti Poutrayana. So while he is uh, lying on his terrace, he found 
some swans are flying and they are talking, then he could hear the voices, voice of the swans. And what he heard that bullock cart driver, his name is Raikwa. And the hunters said, you know, they, they are conversing amongst each other. This cart driver Raikwa is far superior to Janashruti Pautrayana in the matter of spiritual wisdom. Then Janashruti heard it. He, he tried to find out who is this Raikwa who has a greater superior wisdom, spiritual wisdom than anyone else. So he went near went near that Raikwa car drive in search of true knowledge and learned from him the Sambarga Vidya. And what is this Sambarga Vidya? Sambarga, I mean Shankaracharya in his uh, commentary, he uses this Samvarjanat, Sangrahanat, Sangrasanadva, Samvarga. It means that which appropriates, that which absorbs, that which consumes, that takes everything into itself, that which envelops everything into itself is Samvarga. And cosmically, Vayu of the Pancha Mahabhutas, Vayu, is the ultimatum of all. Agni, Surya, Chandra, Parjanya. Parjanya means Vrishti, rain. They all merge into Vayu. And at the, this is what is at the cosmic level. The Vayu at the cosmic level. And at the individual level, it is the Prana. It is the ultimatum of all. So therefore, when we sleep, Speech, eye, ear, mind, everything merges into prana. Therefore, it is said, this is what is the Vedantic realization, that vayu and prana, at the cosmic level vayu, and at the individual level prana, these two are the samvargas. Samvarga means these are the observants. They absorb everything. They take everything into themselves or itself. The earth, water and fire, they merge into Vayu. Therefore, the Upanishad teaches that Vayu in the gods and the Prana in the beings are the two Sambhargas. This is the lesson that Janashruti Pautrayana is getting from the bullock car driver right to her. So it says that everything is contained in Vayu and in Prana. Vayu again is not used here in the sense of mere wind. Neither Prana is used in the sense of mere life. It is the dynamics of the divine. The conscious power permeating the whole space that causes all manifestation. It is the supreme life. That is the life of all lives. Which creates all activity, all movement, possible movements. It is this cosmic force, the prana, the vayu, with the siddhas, a claim as a Kali, the most dynamic power. So Kali, which is the feminine form of Kala, means time. So Mahakala, Mahakala. Kali, which is the time, is the foremost among all the powers which governs the universe. And it is this Great, great, great force which transforms everything. 
It is a force of change. And it is that force of transformation, that force of change, which drives everything to grow and develop, not remain stuck. It is that evolutionary force which forces everything to grow and develop. That's why it is said that Kali, she cooks and ripens everything. In the Mahavidya Sutra, Kali Patala, Vasishta Ganapati Muni says, Kala eva strilingakya Kali Uchyate. Pachakatva meva Kalasya Swarupam. That means it cooks everything. Kala Pachati. The time cooks. And that time is also life. Life is our movement in time. Through our own life force or prana, we experience time. Kaliya's time is the prana, is the life force. Again, Ganapati Muni says, Asmasu pravahanti sa shakti shreshtha prana uchyate. The pranic energy that flows in us, asmasu pravahanti sa shakti. Shreshtha prana uchyate. That's called prana. And that is what is the spirit of time. That is what is Kali. She is the secret power behind the working of our entire you know, physical system, our vital energy. And only through her, everything lives or we live. So this is how Ganapati Muni has brought a great correspondence between the Upanishadic Vidyas and the Mahavidya of the Tantra. So he puts that Yam, he says, Yam Samvarga Vidya Upanishad Sugiyate Kaishit Prana Vidya Parer Mukya Prana Udgita Vidya he said, this Kali Mahavidya is Samvarka Vidya in the Upanishad or Prana Vidya or Udgita Vidya. There's three different Vidyas he corresponds with, he links with the Kali Mahavidya. The Prana Vidya, Udgita Vidya and Samvarka Vidya. So this is what is the nature of Kali. And in this manner, we see in, uh, in the um, entire Mahavidya Sutra, Ganapati Muni establishes a deeper correspondence between the Vedic, Vedantic and Tantric realizations. Vedic, Vedantic and Tantric dimensions I mean the perspectives with regard to the Mahavidyas, with regard to the um, Vidyas, Mahavidyas and the Shakti, uh, the, the, the feminine principles of the different aspects of the Divine Mother, how they need to be worshipped, what is the way, how each of the Upasana of each of the Mahavidya, they lead to they lead to the self-realization. They lead to the self-realization. So uh, that's what I wanted to uh, share with you all with regard to the Dasa Mahavidya. And if there are questions, I will answer to it. I know that it is uh, uh, not easy to do justice to uh, the entire you know, subject. But uh, uh, we are planning uh, to uh, have a uh, have an elaborate course on the Samahavidya, uh, about which I think the team Helamai Yoga will be making the announcement today. So they will give you the details of this this course, uh, which will happen in February. 
and uh, anyone who is interested to continue uh, understanding uh, this Mahavidyas and their Upasanas, the mantra, so are free to join the course. Dhanyavad. Thank you, sir. Yes, friends, we'll be doing the program on 3rd and 4th February. An elaborative program, five hours intensive prog program with Dr. Sampada Anand Mish. Um, in the meantime, my team will be sending you all the emails and WhatsApp messages related to this program on your registered email and mobile number. So before ending this program, I would request if any have anyone have any questions, please digitally raise your hands or post your questions in the chat box. We'll start with the questions. We request Anshumanji to please unmute them, uh, unmute himself, and please ask your question. Namaskar, Mishra ji. Uh, a very quick question. Uh, thank you for your presentation, firstly. And obviously, I think there might be a question that somebody else is also asking, but maybe similar to it. I mean, nowadays the Navratra are going on, and we have got uh, Durga Ma and her various group as well, who we practice, you know, uh, pray to every day uh, uh, through the Navratra. How do those correspond to the Mahavidyas? Is there any correlation there? Yeah. Thank you. You see, uh, as I said, like there are Chatushakti, Navashakti. So they are different forms of the mother. They have their own functions. So they have to be realized in their deeper dimensions. So uh, we may link, for example, like in the, uh, in the Navadurga also, like whatever forms are there, so when we analyze their different, you know, uh, functions, the deeper dimensions of those, some of them have may have correspondence with the Mahavidyas, but the Mahavidyas have a greater role to play in uh, with regard to the uh, realization of the Brahmavidya. So the Navadurga aspect, which uh, we have um, uh, here. Uh, uh, what we worship during the um, uh, Navaratra, the you no, know, um, what do you call uh, the Brahmacharini, Shaila Putri, they have a uh, different uh, you know role. All these deities here, mm -hmm. they have a different role. Uh, though they will have some correspondence, some link with the Mahavidyas, but they represent completely different dimensions of the Supreme Shakti. Understood. Dhanyavad. And I, I'm, I'm just trying to find out, I recently wrote uh, one article on the deeper spiritual significance of these uh, nine different forms, which I can share here. Uh, I think, sir, you can share with us on the mail. Yeah, yeah, we'll good. be sending it with the, we'll share with all the participants. Oh, sure. Guruji, Pranam, this is Srinivas. Both Zabardas inside the Apne. Subse Pella, Ojo prayer Apne starting may chant Kiauska, Agar, Sotas, audio file Milega, Badi Krupa Oigi. Dusra, Jo talk may Apne, Dasamaha with Yaka, Jo each particular form Kajo properties detail Kia. वो अगर आप को डॉक्यूमेंट है या कुछ आप दे सकते हैं बड़ी कृपा होएगी मैंने कोई नोट नहीं किया बिकॉज़ आई वाज लिसनिंग विद रैप्ट अटेंशन जैसे भुवनेश्वरी मां आपने बताया स्पेस है काली मां टाइम है वो पूरा आप अगर अगर डॉक्यूमेंट कुछ रहेगा विद अलोंग विद द प्रेयर श्रीनिवास जी आई एम सो सॉरी दैट आई एम ब्रेकिंग इन बिटवीन बट दिस वीडियो विल बी अपलोडेड ऑन YouTube फॉर एवरीवन टू रेफर बिकॉज़ सर talk was so mesmerizing that I can hardly see anyone writing anything. We all wanted Correct. to listen. So even uh, I I know that I was um, I was just running out of time because I wanted to listen and write as well. It happened with me as well. So I can relate with it completely. So the video will be available on YouTube, maybe in 24 to 48 hours. So uh, his prayer from which he started the program to uh, beautiful elaboration. You can watch and uh, make your own notes from that video. Do not worry. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy Navratri to all of you. So, Guruji, the text you were telling me, Kavya Kanta Ganapati Muniji Ka Mahavidya Sutras, right? 
Mahavidya Sutra. But they are mm -hmm. not available in translation. Their oh, only Sanskrit text is available. And now we have taken up the translation project where the Hindi translation is already done. We are waiting okay. for the English translation. So then combined form of Hindi sure. English translation okay. and the original text will be published. So, Guruji, can I uh, request you? Can you share your three. number? Next can you share three. your number with us? We will be in touch after the Navratri also. A lot to learn from you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my pranams, my humble pranams. Jai Ma, Jai Ma. Hi, Guruji. Uh, here, Ravi Shankar. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to ask uh, one question. Uh, be the last point you said like that uh, uh, self-realization is the very most important. Yes. So, I would like to know what is the self-realization means uh, it is like uh, the Osho said uh, about our self-realization. So is that like or is, is it any uh, different type of practices? Yeah, when we say self-realization, to understand the principles underlying mm -hmm. the creation of this universe and everything that is a part of this universe. So for that, whatever practices help us in understanding the fundamental principles and understanding of oneself, understanding the whole universe and understanding of the different non-material powers which are at play in the maintenance and sustenance of this creation. This uh, self-knowledge, God-knowledge, and the world knowledge. So all the underlying principles, we need to become aware of that. So that is what is meant by the self-knowledge. The self-knowledge is not merely the knowledge of oneself. It also includes the knowledge of what lies outside. So one has to see oneself. One has to see what lies outside also as one's own self. Because it's all met by the same principle. So that's why the Brahma Vidya includes the Atma Vidya, Deva Vidya and Jagat Vidya. Jagat Jnana, Atma Jnana and the Deva Jnana. So we can go for the another uh, dimension level for the understanding. Is like that Guru? Another dimension means? Another uh, understanding of another dimension, next level dimension. Yeah, the different aspects of life, the creation, the cosmos, everything has to be understood. So until one has attained to that state where one realizes Atmani Sarvabhutani Sarvabhuteshu Chatmana. So within oneself, one sees everything and within everything one sees oneself. So unless and until one has arrived at this level, so uh, one has to keep pursuing one's own sadhana, following the path most suitable to one's own innate nature, one's own subhava and swadharma. Guruji, sorry, one last question. Actually, uh, this uh, Dasamaha Vidya is the uh, higher stage for the tantric practice or uh, this is the uh, beginners uh, for to learn about this? Is the, this is the highest form in the tantric practice, in the Shakti Upasana, in the Shakti Mahaka. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Guru. Thank you so much. Namaste, Sampadananji. Anji, Anji, Anji. Uh, you mentioned about uh, Bhairavi as charming and Paravak. And she is the consort of Bhairav. Yeah. She's fierce. Could you yes, she's highlight? Fierce. Yeah. Could you please uh, explain this apparent yeah, like duality? In the process of her manifestation, so she is the most terrific one bringing out the entire creation from that primordial sound. In the sense like from the silent state, because the speech comes from the state of silence. And from that silence, just imagine the 
the whole ocean is quiet and suddenly there is an upsurge which brings out the vibrations, the ripples, the waves. And then with what kind of sound? In that, when it when that upsurge happens, so it, 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 it assumes a kind of terrific form. Mm. Immediately from the sound, whatever little sound we hear, it looks like a terrific sound, a huge sound. So yeah. that that is why it is not see, it is seen as the Bhairava. Suddenly from the silent form, there is an upsurge of the vibration, of the ripples, of the waves. Inbuilt duality. Okay, fine. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, sir, we have few questions in the chat box. Okay. So, is there a connection between Chaturthasa Vidya and Dasa Mahavidya? Yeah, when we say Chaturthasa Vidya, they are the record of uh, various knowledge systems. And uh, uh, see, uh, the Vidya and Mahavidya, the word Vidya, which is used in the Samvarga Vidya, Prana Vidya, Vaishwanara Vidya, and the word Vidya in the Mahavidya, they have the correspondence. But here, when we say Chaturdasa Vidya, there the Vidya is not corresponding to the same sense as we have in Samvarga Vidya and all. So, in the Samvarga Vidya and uh, Mahavidya, they are pathways to realization, specific, intense, concentrated pathways to self-realization. But here the Vidya in Chaturdasa Vidya is referring to the knowledge tradition, knowledge system. Like you have all the, you know, like Veda, Vedanga, uh, Upavedas. So this is where I don't think that we can... Uh, link the Vidya of the Chaturdasa Vidya with Dasa Mahavidya. Yeah, there are in the Shakta tradition, there are uh, various Upasanas of Shakti. She is worshipped in her various uh, forms. So, Amba Upasana, also a specific um, way to uh, realize the Supreme Divine Mother. Yeah, all the higher principles are feminine in nature. The Vidya is always connected to the Devi. Devi in the sense, to the feminine. That's where the word is in feminine gender. I think Deepji wanted to ask something. Please unmute yourself, sir. Deepji? Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Vidya Rupena Sanstita. Namastase, 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 Namam. I think he has dropped. So. Do we have any more questions? Deepji, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. PG, am I audible? Maybe he has an audio problem connection connecting to you can yeah. You're blocking it on mute. Uh, no, sir, we aren't. Uh, let me check with my tech uh, operations team. Well, you can type your question.
Deepji, can you try again? I request Deepji to uh, write the write in the chat box your question, and then we'll share it on your behalf. Because that's how the sadhaks, the siddhas have realized it as the highest form of realization. So this comes straight from their own experience, their own realizations. Do we have any more questions? Not necessary. One can uh, cling to uh, any single Mahavidya and through that the Upasana or the realization of other Mahavidyas, it happens. It is not necessary that, but if one wants to do also, the, like uh, um, uh, Ganapati Muni was a Sri Vidya Upasaka at the same time he was doing the Chin Namasta. But it is through any of these Mahavidyas one can realize the other Mahavidyas or their roles, their functions. Yeah, it depends upon like what does one mean uh, by initiation. Like uh, initiation is definitely necessary. So one has to say, for example, like if I have to, you know, crack the UPSC examination, I have to have a lot of preparation for that. So in order to follow the path, there are certain requirements one has to have, certain necessary preparation. That is why the initiation was given by the Guru. The mantra was given by the Guru. But there can be a self-initiation also by invoking the presence of the deity. The deity can take care of. The sadhak must remember that the sadhak is incapable of doing the sadhana. Therefore, the sadhak has to leave it to the mother to do the sadhana for the sadhak. So for that, sir is a complete self-giving. Purna Atma Nivedan. And when that complete self-surrender, this Atma Nivedana is there. All the great Shaktis one can invoke and then one can take the blessings of those great Shaktis. So maybe like I'll, I'll narrate a short story. This story is of, you know, this is my, my favorite story. And then I have narrated this story and shared this story with many of my friends, many colleagues, many uh, platforms also. Uh, there was this, you know, like you, you all have heard about Krishna and uh, um, his name is uh, Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama was very, very jealous of Krishna. Ashwatthama always thought that my father has given me everything. All the uh, all the uh, you know shaktis which needed like brahmastra is there with me the various astras mantra shaktis are with me and the highest is brahmastra krishna doesn't have that but still krishna is worshipped he is agrapujya because of the sudarshan shakti so if i can get that sudarshan chakra from Krishna, then I will kill Krishna with that Sudarshan Chakra and then I become the Agrapujya. So keeping that in mind, Ashwatthama goes to Krishna as his guest. And there is a superb Atithya hospitality. And then towards the end, when they were to retire to sleep, Ashwatthama says to Krishna, that you know Krishna, I am your Atithi, I am guest. You must give to Atithi whatever the Atithi asks. 
So Krishna says, yes, you can ask anything. Anything, all my positions belong to you. You can ask all my positions. I will be happy to give you anything that you ask. So he said, no, no, I don't want all positions, but I just, just the small request, I want the Sudarshan. is very excited and then he goes and tries to lift the Sudarshan, that disc, you can say, in the physical form. <laughs> and he puts all his Samarthya, tries hard to lift it and fails. Completely fails. He has no strength even to get up. He has adjusted his strength but couldn't lift Sudarshan. And Krishna is smiling from behind. And then Krishna asked him that uh, nobody, you don't have to be ashamed but can you tell me, Ashuttham, what was the purpose of Sudarshan? And also some physical disc, which is a Shakti. And for possessing any Shakti, one needs two things. Clarity in purpose that why one wants to possess that. And then Purna Samarpana, complete Atma Nivedana, complete self-giving. If these two are there, one can possess. Krishna said that there are even higher Shaktis than Sudarshan. And if you have these two, the clarity in purpose, pure and the complete Atma Nivedana, you can possess any Shakti. Can you tell And what would Ashutthama answer? He had no word to answer. But Krishna knew about it, being under young. So that is the reason, like when we say initiation, these two things are extremely important, the clarity and purity in purpose. And then intensity in our complete self-giving. This is how one initiates oneself. We need to have sincerity, we need to have perseverance, we need to have uh, devotion, dedication, intensity in our aspiration, purity. If all these things, Atma Nivedan, complete surrender, if all these things are there, then one is initiated. One remains open to uh, uh, the Shakti and the Shakti takes care of it. That's why the Shakti initiates the Sadhak itself. But when one fails, one can depend upon an external Guru for initiation. Yeah, what is uh, my Guru Parampara? I Though I am not initiated to any uh, path, uh, I can tell you from my childhood, my grandfather was a Tantra Upasaka. He had initiated me to the path. He was my first guru if it comes to any kind of initiation. But at the same time, my grandfather also told me always that find the guru within, find the guru within. Find the divinity, divine within. Find the, you know, Shastra within. And when I came in contact with Sri Aurobindo and the mother, their writings, I immediately got connected with it. But this is what Sri Aurobindo says, right in the beginning chapters of his essays on the Gita. And then uh, in the um, uh, synthesis of yoga, when he talks about the Guru and Shastra, so he says the same thing that, you know, like these aids, uh, he talks about the four aids, the Utsaha, the Kala, and the Guru and the Shastra. He says one has to ultimately find out the Guru within. One has to find out the Shastra within. The ultimate Guru is sitting within. The outer Guru, the outer Shastra 
can be a means, can be, you know, an find out that inner guru and the inner shastra. I think that has been my path. So, uh, I mean, there are many things which I cannot share in a public platform or with anyone other than me, but it's my connection, deeper connection with my gurus and deeper connection with my inner uh, Devi or inner, uh, you know, guru, inner Shastra. But this is what is my uh, situation.